and then after after they've um, completed, then we'll continue with our normal um, routine as far as our Rotary meeting. So at this point, let's uh, start the pledge. I see the, the uh, American flag uh, flying behind um, our um, Sergeant at Arms, Alan. So I'll start it off. I pledge I allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, justice, justice, for, all. justice for, all. for all. Thank you. At this point, I'll turn it over to past President Murray for our speaker introduction and the students, please. Thank you. Thank you, President Cleve. Uh, today, we have the honor of having um, Connie Maynard. Connie's been with us many times. Welcome, Connie. Thank you. And um, as many of us know, she is actively engaged at the Minuteman so much. She teaches French, Spanish, Latin. She's the Rotary Interact Club Advisor over at Minuteman High School. And um, she is the lead in the Humanities Department, junior class advisor, and then again, advisor to the, to the uh, Interact Club, Rotary, the Interact Community Service Club at Minuteman as it is called. And uh, in these times of COVID, I think it's really, really important that the students keep in touch with the Rotary Club of Lexington, um, any Interact Club with its community, Rotary Club is so, so important. So this really gives us that opportunity. Thank you, Connie. And we'd just love to hear from you what's going on, hear from the students, whatever program you have planned. Well, thank you. Thanks, Mary. And thank you, everybody, for meeting us a little bit early. We appreciate that. Um, it's not the students, it's me. I have, to, <laughs> I have a class at 1250. Um, but I have two seniors here who have been involved with the Interact Community Service Club since they were freshmen. One of them, Samantha Kerr, is the current vice president of the Interact Community Service Club. And the other one, Henry Blackburn, was the secretary for three years. Um, he is involved in so many activities at this point that he had to step down for, as an officer, but he's still involved in the club. Um, the president would have loved to have been here, but she, Trinity uh, Shirozi, but she's on co-op, so she couldn't make it. Um, and I was telling Mari, and probably some of you heard it, we, um, we were trying to get some freshmen to come and give you a uh, fresh perspective from their eyes. Uh, what the community service club means to them, but unfortunately, most of them were kind of shy about it. They didn't. They want. They were going to come to the luncheon if you were here, but they didn't really want to speak. So hopefully, in the future, I can get some students who are new to the club to talk about what the club has meant to them thus far. But at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Samantha Kerr and Henry Blackburn. Uh, Samantha and Henry. And Samantha and Henry are both, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, okay. We they're both you. seniors in the biotechnology program here at Minuteman. <laughs> and as I said, they've been involved in Interact since the, their freshman year. They're going to um, kind of split up their activities. Henry is going to talk about things that they've both done in the past. Um, and then Sam is going to talk about things that we've been able to do since COVID because we haven't been able to keep the regular um, all of our regular activities going because of COVID. So they're gonna tell you what's been done in the past, what we're doing now, and what we'll be doing in the future. And um, I just wanted to let you know that both of them have been accepted to the, the colleges of their choices. Um, so I'm gonna let them tell you where they're going to school, what they're gonna major in, and um, what they hope to do in the future and also you know, what they did while they were a part of the community service club and how it impacted them. So I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, I think Henry, you're gonna yeah. go first. So Henry will go first and then Sam will be afterwards. Hi, uh, I'm Henry Black, oh, sorry. Oh, did I, sorry. All good. Um, okay. Hi, I'm Henry Blackburn. Uh, yeah, I'm a senior in biotechnology. I've uh, been involved um, throughout the past four years. Um, still heavily involved in the uh, club, just really hard to kind of 
be involved with uh, the leadership side of things as being involved in many things kind of takes up a lot of your time. So to devote myself to it entirely uh, became really hard. Um, yeah, so uh, I got accepted into uh, Rochester Institute of Technology um, in Rochester, New York, um, which is a, a really nice school. It was my top choice. I applied uh, right, uh, early decision um, and got the presidential scholarship uh, yeah, I uh, currently I applied to their university exploration major, which basically means um, it, it's basically undecided, but um, with extra steps, it's uh, I, I get specialized um, resources to explore the uh, different majors there. Um, but besides that, uh, currently I really have no plan. Um, I'm really interested in engineering, design, and you know, in biotechnology. I'm really interested in biology and, and everything that comes with that. Um, and I'm also really interested in uh, education and education reform um, on the larger scale. So yeah, I, I really am interested in pursuing something like that um, in the future. Uh, yeah, so back in my freshman year, the, the, I guess the first thing that really got me involved um, was the Walk for Hunger. I think it was in May, right? Mm -hmm. um, so my, my, I, I heard about the club um, basically my entire year and I had a few friends who were involved, um, but uh, coming out of middle school, I was very, you know, in a new school. I really, I didn't know anyone. Um, I was, I was a very timid kid, um, as much as I could talk. Uh, and I really just like was having trouble getting out of my shell. But then eventually I heard like the, the announcement for the walk for hunger. And I, you know, I knew some of my friends that want, that were going to do it. And, you know, uh, I really just, I wanted to get involved. I really wanted to do this thing with my friends. And so I kind of just um, right at the last minute was like, oh, like ask my teacher if I could um, run down to the uh, the area where they were gathering and decide to sign up. Um, it was probably one of the best decisions I could have made um, like at that time, because uh, it really kind of opened the door for me to get involved with so many other things. Um, you know, I, I did the walk with two other friends, kept pace with them the entire time. And uh, it, it was just really a great time to kind of to, to see the community that you know community service brings. Um, that's the, uh, a huge aspect of it for me is the fact that you know no one's getting paid to be there. Everyone's there of their own accord and is really just interested in helping out and being involved. And you know those kind of people are always like the best kind of people to be around. It's always you know super friendly, super welcoming. Um, you know, past that, I never really felt, um, you know, anxious or worried about being around uh, people. So that, that kind of became one of my, um, my, my safe havens for uh, kind of getting out of my shell. Um, and now I can't remember the timeline of, of the following ones, but some of the other uh, activities that I got involved in is we did the Polar Punch for polio uh, one year, um, uh, which we also use as an opportunity to uh, memorialize a student who had passed away, unfortunately, that year. Um, and we've been doing that like a few years before COVID. Um, we want to kind of, we're looking about it towards the future. We got uh, like the, the Friends Forever, the meeting of kids from Northern Ireland. Um, they came here uh, within our, um, our district restaurant. Uh, we made omelets with them like in the, in the kitchen, which was really cool. I got to get like a whole new perspective about people um, you know, because like, you know, you can you can do as much reading as you want about other sides of the world, but until you meet someone from that area, um, you really don't get a, a true perspective. Um, so that, that was really interesting to like talk to those kids and um, they did that. And we also got to do a, a pack out, we packed out um, birthday supplies um, uh, for, for children uh, who uh, didn't have access to it. Um, there's also the Rise Against Hunger pack out, which I unfortunately didn't get involved in. I know Trinity was involved in. Were you? In? No, I wasn't. No, able you to go. Went. Yeah. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to go with that. That was also a really um, big thing for, I know, for a lot of people. Uh, we have a running uh, partnership uh, with Jamsi Gatsa, which is a um, Tibetan community school in uh, India. And we've kind of have an active communication. They've come to visit um, once or twice. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the people on the board, yep. Yes, um, and we, we kind of have a running uh, partnership with them as like a, a school and help uh, each other out in kind of different ways. Um, we also do uh, like uh, yearly, we do cards for the nursing home, uh, a nursing home near here where um, a bunch of students, this it was actually really big this year, which was really great. 
um, where a bunch of students write cards um, for uh, these people in the nursing home um, to kind of make it feel you know, less lonely and, and kind of interact with people. Um, and finally, uh, what I'll talk about is uh, Skills USA, which is another club in Minuteman. Um, Skills USA is a professional organization. And, you know, the whole goal of like preparing students for um, working in the real world. Um, they do that in a, a bunch of different ways, but um, there's kind of the, the leadership and, or I guess they, they do competitions um, for students in their vocational areas and around leadership. And they also have a whole other side that's more focused on the, the local area, obviously if it's community service, but um, where it's a lot more a chapter run, like within the school um, where they kind of focus on community service projects. And especially this year, we've kind of uh, looked to build a, a larger partnership um, between uh, the community service club and uh, and Skills USA to kind of boost these uh, these things uh, across the school and kind of get more people involved with them and and, and bet, which benefits both of our uh, clubs here. Um, yeah, it's been really great. Um, like I said, the, the club has been really influential on me and kind of um, what I want to pursue in the future because I, I did like a uh, some community service when I was like a lot younger, but that was more kind of happenstance. I just happened to be in the right place and was able to do that. Um, but being here, kind of really being active in the community service, making it, it, it was really my choice to do that. Um, it, it was really rewarding. Um, it was really nice. It, it jumpstarted me getting uh, involved with a lot of other clubs as well. Um, and I really want to look towards community service projects and, you know, all, especially on a larger scale, um, to, to benefit a lot of people um, into college and, you know, into my adult life, really, um, which I think is really great. Uh, Sam, do you want to take it away? Thanks, Henry. Of course. Um, so, hi, I'm Samantha. Um, I am going to uh, Wheaton College in Massachusetts. Um, I also got a presidential scholarship from them. Um, I got, and I plan to major in biochemistry, and then after undergrad, I intend to go to grad school, um, and then eventually go into research. Um, I got involved in community service very young. I joined Girl Scouts, um, so I did a lot through there. Um, and so coming into Minuteman, I had heard about the community service club, and a couple of my friends joined it, so I joined it as well. Um, and I was, I joined it towards the middle of um, freshman year and unfortunately had a lot of scheduling conflicts with a lot of the events that year um, so I wasn't really able to do a lot with it but then my sophomore year I started really getting involved um, we have a trip that's open that has been in the past open to um, sophomores through seniors um, they've gone to New Orleans in the past um, and we were supposed to go to Puerto Rico um, I got accepted to go on the trip um, my sophomore year, we were supposed to help rebuild homes um, after some of the earthquakes that happened in Puerto Rico. But unfortunately, because of COVID, that got canceled um, right before the trip too, which was unfortunate, but you know, it had to happen. Um, and so obviously now we've been trying to do community service stuff during COVID, um, which has been very difficult because you can't exist can't exactly meet with your community. Um, and so like we've done things with like um, John C. Gatsal, um, the, the school in India, Henry talked about, we had an online meeting with them um, and they just talked about what they do. Um, you know, so that was our, our way of getting involved with them when none of the board members could actually come to the school. Um, and we did the holiday cards um, and we've done, some drives as well, which are much easier to do during a pandemic um, than a lot of other community service events because you don't necessarily have to meet with people, but you can still help. Um, so we did a um, drive for the Somerville Homeless Coalition um, where we collected food and toiletries at the school. Um, and we also this year did a coat drive with um, Open Table and Maynard um, and it was focusing on most, I mean, it's clothing drive focusing mostly on coats and winter gear for immigrants um, who don't have winter gear. And obviously if they're, they've just immigrated to Massachusetts, they do need that. 
Um, so that was, I thought that was very cool. And we worked with a student who is not a member of the community service club, but had wanted to get involved because her dad was involved with um, open table. Um, and again, we were trying to do more of the community, the community within our school um, outreach. So with different clubs. So Henry mentioned Skills USA. Um, this year, we're doing a drive for the Be Like Brit Foundation, which seeks to get materials and resources for schools in Haiti. Um, like, and that was a collaboration between us and Skills USA. Um, we intend to do more stuff like that in the future and going even forward and more forward into our future plans. Um, we plan to, ex we've done in the past, uh, drive for the Pennies for Patients program, which is now called Light the Night. Um, and we want to expand that program to have make it a big community event with our new um, track in our recently built athletic fields, um, similar to like a relay for life type event. Um, the relays are just people walking the track and playing games and stuff. Thank you. Very nice. If anybody has any questions for either one of these, uh, these two individuals, they're great. They'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. If you're not, if you want some more information on any of the things they've mentioned or um, have any other questions, feel free to ask, please. I just, I have a, just a general question for both um, mm -hmm. Henry and Samantha. What guided you to uh, Minuteman High School? Why did you choose to go to Minuteman High School as opposed to Lexington High School or your local, I don't know which towns you, you guys live in, but whatever your local high school was. Sorry, yeah, I'll go first. Um, so actually I first heard about Minuteman because my mom went to Minuteman. Oh. Um, and yeah, so that was, so she went to Minuteman. Um, that was what, like that, she graduated in 92. Um, and you know, at the time she was, she was very, but my dad also went to a um, trade school. Um, so they were both already very involved with the vocational school um, type of learning. And Miniman also had outreach programs to my middle school. Um, we, we had a class, it was an engineering class that was taught by a teacher who was working with Minuteman. Um, and we, I was in uh, Stowe. Yeah, I was, I was in Stowe. I know they did with a couple other towns too. Um, and so I went, I, I took that class obviously. And then I had their uh, girls in STEM programs over the um, over February break, uh, I went to one of those, and I just I loved it. I loved the school. I liked talking to the students. Um, they seemed very involved, and I I at the time already sort of knew I wanted to go into um, a science. I really liked biology, and I heard about biotechnology, and I was like that that's what I want to do. Um, and I loved that I would have the opportunity to sort of focus in it um, before going to college. Uh, yeah, uh, for me, it was a, a very different story, actually. Um, uh, I, I live in Needham, which um, historically is a very kind of academically prestigious town. Um, and while I, I, always, I always was fine there, I, I excelled in the classes I took and, you know, I, I did well, but I always kind of found myself really kind of bored with it I guess there, there was there was things that I was interested in that I wasn't able to pursue um I dropped out of uh out of the public school system in after sixth grade um and kind of went on a little journey through different schools between seventh and eighth grade um come the end of eighth grade uh the school I was at at the time you know I liked but it was really you know I still felt like it wasn't for me um two weeks before the beginning of the school year um, I ended up interviewing um, at Minuteman and, you know, talking about it, I, I remember sitting in the, uh, the lobby, like before my interview, reading the pamphlet and I was like, this seems really cool. It seems like a, a, exactly what I was kind of looking for because I, you know, I really am interested in everything academically. I love like researching and studying everything from history to English to math to science. Um, but I also really like that being able to dive deep and really kind of get into the nitty gritty, be able to ask like weird questions, like ask why something happens and not feel bad for a side tracking class or something, um, which is something, you know, I was made to feel bad for. It was to kind of express interest in the subject because it, you know, all the other students weren't really interested in the classes they were taking. Um, 
So coming here, it, it was really just kind of, I, I was looking for something different than, you know, the normal paradigm. You, you can tell why I want to go to education reform. Um, <laughs> uh, and, you know, I, I really found a kind of a, a different, you know, thing that was really offered um, something unique to me where I could study what I wanted to and, and really pursue interests um, that I had in uh, a very practical way too, because it's, you know, even if I don't decide to go into something directly biotechnology related, I feel, you know, really confident in going here because I've gotten, I've gained a lot of professional skills, speaking skills. Um, I, we got to go to a um, job fair for college students um, at UMass Amherst at one of their medical centers. And I were talking with doctorate, um, you know, people who help doctorates uh, and in all these different fields um, across the medical center. And I didn't feel like I was over my head once. Like I, you know, felt like I belonged there and that I, you know, understood everything that was going on um, pretty much like the entire time, which was, felt was a really kind of great feeling. Um, and so, yeah, that, that is like, yeah. Great. Really great. Thank you. Um, you both have done beautifully uh, you. in your activities at the Minuteman High School, including your Interact Club and the services that you've provided. Do you both feel um, that what you have done has rubbed off on some of the underclassmen uh, coming up through the school? And um, do you think that you have developed an ability to mix with people and discuss services uh, by people for people. That's such an important thing in our society. Uh, so according to, or per your experience, how do you feel about what I've just asked? Um, yeah, so I definitely feel like I have had an influence on the underclassmen. Um, my little sister is a freshman at Minuteman this year. Um, and she wanted to do community service club because of me and um, she, got some of her friends into it um, and I've been able to you know talk to some of the underclassmen who are in the community service club um, which is something that you know not a lot of people do not a lot of people end up talking to a lot of the underclassmen um, so you know it's it's nice to actually be able to do that um, and I do think that I have got gotten um, experience you know talking to people in the community and trying to plan projects um, especially as an officer in the club um, I'm very involved in that um, and you know through working with the Lexington Rotary Club, um, it's been really helpful in, you know, talking about planning and outreach um, and trying to get involved in things. Yeah, uh, I, I completely agree. It's, you know, as an underclassman and then moving into uh, junior, senior year, uh, like when I got there, it, it's, it's such a unique dynamic, even, you know, for a club, because you know, when, when you're in a club, you know, you're, you're there because you're interested in whatever you're participating in, but there's still like, you know, in some other clubs, there's still that kind of dynamic between upperclassmen and, and underclassmen. And it's, it's still kind of weird. Um, but I felt especially with a uh, community service club that, you know, that while, you know, obviously there's more mentorship that happens between upperclassmen and lowerclassmen, um, you really kind of feel on the same level of each other, I guess. You're everyone, like I said, you know, my freshman year, everyone is always really friendly to each other and, and you just, it's really welcoming. And, you know, I, I try to bring that environment the best I can to, to everywhere I go, but you know, especially it's, it's uh, conducive to the environment uh, that Community Service Club here brings. Um, so it's really easy to just kind of like interact with uh, freshmen, sophomores and and, you know, get them involved because you're all united there by your interest in community service. Um, so yeah, it's just it's really great. Uh, thanks for your um, enthusiasm and those beautiful answers. Thank you. Of course. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. Um, one thing I forgot to mention that we also did this year was the Battle Green Run in Lexington. And so that was another opportunity, like Henry and Sam were both saying, to get people from different levels. I have forgotten to, to mention that to them. And I was like, oh, yeah, we have the battle green one, too. Um, that was great, too, because as they were both saying, when you do these community service activities, you're, they're all together. 
So you've got freshmen and with the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and they're all, like Henry said, basically on the same level, working toward the same goal. And so it gives um, the upperclassmen an opportunity for mentorship um, and also gives the freshmen the sense of like, okay, the, the upperclassmen like us, or the upper class people, I suppose I should say, the upper class persons like us and um, you know, want to be with us and want to interact with us. So we have a, a, a very good number of freshmen that join the club. This is the biggest club we've had since I started. We have about 36 members. So um, when I first started about five years ago, I think we had about 10 or 12. So it's gained a lot of popularity and um, as both Henry, as this, Sam and Henry were both saying, um, like that student who got involved with the code drive, whose dad was part of Open Table, we have students who aren't technically part of the club who do activities with us. And very often those kids will end up joining community service. So the community service, one of the things we offer is that even kids who aren't part of the club are welcome to do community service with us with the hopes that we can get more and more people um, involved in it. And usually once students have done community service, it kind of, they, they catch the bug and they want to keep doing it. So um, it's really helped expand our membership. Connor, you have as many members as we do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go, all right. I heard, oh. I was hearing you talking earlier and I heard, Mario, did you say you were up to 110 at one point? Yeah. Oh, I, yes, okay, I, I consider yeah, myself we're really up to one at one time. Come on, I, it was amazing. I, if we could ever get like that, that would be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We agree. If that many people would feel pretty good. But the way you're really, going, it might happen. Yeah, yeah. No, the kids, the thing is, it's really um, gratifying to see how many kids want to do community service, how many kids come in already doing it, and how many kids, once they start doing it with us, um, want to keep doing it. It's just, um, it's really gratifying to see that. So, and I know that's what your club, I mean, that's what your, the Rotary Club does. That's what you care about too, which is awesome. And the hope of course, is that these young people will continue to do community service throughout their lifetime, which I do believe they will. Yeah, um, they will Continue with it. Well, you know, once you get form. that bug, you want to keep on doing it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Well, we welcome them in our club when they're ready. Okay. When yep. you're ready, you heard that. <laughs> Great. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you. I'm sorry we have to run. Um, so, thank you for letting us go first. We appreciate it. Um, Laurie, a special shout out. I noticed you had texted me and I missed your text. I apologize. So I will get back to you. Uh, and um, to you, Laurie, I'll give you a call. Laurie uh, has been um, very involved with the Minuteman Interact as well as Marie and is kind of our liaison to your club. So I need to get in contact with Laurie. <laughs> but thanks, Laurie, for reaching out. I will talk to you very soon. Thank Connie, you very much, Connie. Connie, Connie, Connie thank, thank you very much. much. I'll be very, thank you. Connie, I'll be very, very, very brief. Thank you for all your help in the past. We really appreciate everything you've done for us. Connie, I'll be very, very brief. Just want to thank Samantha and Henry for what they're doing. Um, we're very proud. The Rotary stands behind you, you for what you're doing as young adults. Um, Connie, as you see the, the faces on the screen there, a lot of Rotarians have been there for years or the past my presidency here this past year. Um, they've said so many good, good things about you, things you've done for Rotary over the years. So it's a small um, token of our appreciation for everything you've done in your presentation today. Uh, Rotary, is, Rotary Lexington Club is gonna make a donation um, to our national uh, cause as far as eradication of uh, polio um, for children. Uh, so I wanna thank you very oh, thank much you for so what you've much. done. Uh, you'll you get, you'll you receive so that um, plaque uh, live at some point. But thank, thank you so much. I really, yeah. we really appreciate yeah. it. Thank and we you. thank you for all the, all the help you've given us and all the support we've gotten from you over the years. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, get to work. Yeah, Have a good yeah, night. <laughs> Take care, Connie. This has been thank fun. you right again. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Rotarians, we'll continue on with the meeting. Um, Past President Frank, can we have the uh, secretary's report, please? Absolutely. Uh, in attendance today, we have uh, 15 Rotarians and we had three guests. That's it. 
That's it. <laughs> Good report. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> fines and happy dollars. I'll start it out with a fine and with a happy dollar. First of all, um, Rotarian uh, Ariana had a birth of a baby boy, um, Jalen, um, this past week. So I want to happy dollars uh, regarding that and congratulations uh, regarding the birth of her uh, first child there. And nice. I also feel a, feel a bad as far as a, a fine. Um, we had to throw an audible as far as starting a little bit early. We did plan to switch things around, but starting a little bit early. So a number of Rotarians um, signed on on time. Um, Vice President Megan, um, past President Laura, you were on time, but we kind of started a little bit early. So I apologize uh, for that. But uh, continuing on with fines and happy dollars. Um, I have also, I have 20 happy dollars for Yanira's new arrival to her family. Congratulations. Ariana's, I'm not, not yet, not yet, Dan. I mean, oh, sorry, Ariana, there's another fine. Give me a couple more weeks to, to get her cooked all the way and then she'll I'm be I'm sorry. Here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right, Dan. I was reading my notes very conspicuously, very um, thoroughly here because I almost did the same thing. <laughs> How much did you donate, Cleve? You can put 25, 25, 50, so, okay, 50 oh. total. All right. <laughs> uh, next. Congratulations, else? Ariana. Anybody else who finds happy dollars? I'm going to do 35 happy dollars for Ariana and also for everyone who um, chipped in on the extra flowers I sent, uh, I sent her. Um, she loved them and she's mom and baby are doing great. Um, he's like the cutest baby I've ever seen this quick out of the womb, like look perfect. Yeah. So um, thank you, everybody. Sergeant Arms. Yeah. Oh. No, no, I'm, I'm just, but I was wondering if you know, could you, could you arrange to like come to your next meeting from like the delivery room or from the hospital and holding the baby? That would be really odd. <laughs> We've never had that before. So see what you can do. If I can plan having her on a rotary Monday, then I will do so. <laughs> Early to Tuesday, so it would be awesome. <laughs> Been done before. That's President uh, Spencer. I see your hand up. Yep. Can't hear you. Can't hear you, Spencer. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I double muted myself. Uh, I'll put in five happy dollars and uh, give Ariana uh, like a brief, like what she might be up to. So this Saturday, I got to go and ski with my son in negative four degree weather to start out the morning. And then just because we weren't cold enough at lunchtime, we went and we ice fished for three hours on a frozen lake, which was much worse than the negative four degrees uh, snowboarding. <laughs> Um, but that's just, you know, something that she can, you know, look forward to in the next few years of, you know, yeah. having a son that uh, enjoys the outdoors. My son was literally doing like angels on the ice as I was shivering, making sure that they didn't fall through any cracks, even though it was eight inches thick. So a paranoid so the, mother is, and an active son. Is the, is the five bucks a reflection of the market conditions today? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have a, yeah. <laughs> no comment yeah <laughs> next anybody else hey spence you ought to be happy you got free advertising even in the down times <laughs> okay i don't see i don't see any other hands here um we'll continue on with um announcements and uh club business um i received a uh, thank you note um virtually um through, through dan to um Past President Dan um, from the Lexington Food, Food Pantry, we had donated um, as a as a club um, five hundred fifty dollars as a holiday holiday donation to them um, at the at the holiday meeting. So we received a thank you card for them from there. Uh, received an email from the Chinese so American Association of Lexington. Their uh, New Year's uh, Lunar New Year's celebration is on May thirty first, and they requested a. Um, a virtual uh, greeting um, from Rotary for myself to them, which I did. Um, we um, were able to get by some IT issues, but we were able to record that. And that's actually going to be on Lex Media Monday the 31st from 9, from excuse me, from 8 to uh, um, 9 p.m. 
And continuing on, uh, we'll continue to evaluate um, as far as staying on the Zoom platform versus being in person. Any thoughts on that, Rotarians? I don't see, I don't. Nancy, what's up? Hmm? Well, I think, I think with the new revelations based on uh, natural immunity and things like that, I think if we do it one more month, by, I think by March, I think things are going to ease up quite a bit. Fingers Hopefully. crossed. <laughs> I think that, one that, more month would make sense. That, 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 that does, that does sound good. That, that, that sounds good. And hopefully the numbers will continue um, health wise is, uh, is the way they're going is the way they're going with that. Um, Super Bowl Super Bowl squeeze um, past President Spencer has been working very diligently with that. Uh, Spencer, do you have anything to add to that at all or it just thank you, Dan, for doing it all. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan doesn't get away. Did I the wrong way? <laughs> that's an automatic. Uh, no, that's okay. Yeah, we are. are we up to uh, second second round of them. We open the second grid, and we are down to I think, uh, unless I have some new ones. Uh, I'm looking right now. Uh, to do, to do. We have uh, 11 left, 11 squares left. So anybody that wants to get in, now's the time. We're almost closed out. So that will, and, once, and I know we'll get rid of them. Um, that will raise $2,000 for the club, less $60, $30 per grid to, to register the grid. So. Great, uh, thank you, thank you for that. And the final thing I have is the polar plunge is go is going to be on April second. Um, Dan has uh, reserved a room up, up uh, north in Gloucester for us. Uh, Dan, everything. Thanks to Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. With that. Uh, you're welcome. Just, you're, you're quite welcome. I just see this on their website. What was the right? date on that, Cleve? Uh, April second. Thank you. Yeah. And I did see on their website that parking is um, one vehicle, apparently, for um, for room reservation there. So I, I think in the past, there's been a carpool that's gone up there, I believe. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but we usually, they have shuttle buses that run from Cranes Beach parking lot over to the... They do. Over to the uh, inn. Okay, okay. Now, I just saw on the inn, park, on the inn yeah. their website, or their email. It's Good Harbor there. Beach, Dan. Yeah. Oh, Good Harbor. Yeah. Um, so I usually drive up. So anyone who wants to go, I can fit five people, six people. Very good. Okay, Rotarians, that's all I have. Anything further? Okay, you want to see? Uh, you want yeah. to see the pick? You want to see the pick? Oh, go ahead, Bob. I don't know if anybody saw the uh, Jimmy Shaw's local rag come out. I got it in the mail <laughs> over the weekend. I guess I'm a little disappointed. They did a whole. Toothpaste spread on Lexab and Rotary wasn't mentioned in it at all. Yeah, I saw that. And I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the board members here, and I think it's the first time in a long time we've had no Rotary members on the Lexab board. Right. Hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. the reason. I know. We'll have to work on that for the future then. <laughs> so here you go. There's the picture in question. I think it's 1991. So I don't there's know. Don there's Don Sherman. No, it couldn't be 91. No, I mean I'm sorry, 80, 81 or 84. Yeah. Uh oh 81. Sorry, 81. Yeah. Paul Conclave. So there's Don Sherman, Priscilla Eagle, Dave Eagle, Bob Sacco. I think that's <laughs> Bob Shaw in the back. That's Bob Swanson. Uh Jack. Kathy, uh, one of the Walshes. Which one of the Walshes? Tom. That looks like Tom. Is, it, Tom. is that Tom? Tom? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure who this is. Or that guy there in the background. That's Louis Bongiano. This okay. could be Eddie Shannon. Yep. I don't know. Doesn't look like him, does it? No. I don't know this guy. 
there's my mother, Kay Booza. Judy Sacco, that's Pat Swanson. This I'm not sure, not sure, not sure, not sure. This one, not sure, no. Dan Booza Sr., not sure there, not sure there. That's, I think this is Brenda Shaw. Mm. Right? right? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent, wow. Dan. That's great. That's what, pretty, what is it? Where is that? Um, what house is that or building is that? That's, Dan? Jack's, that's Jack's house down in Barnstable. Okay. I get it. We don't have any records to go back that far. Record to, to what? The who are the members? Oh, I don't know. Sacco, Bill, might, Sacco might have something. Or Bill Cassell might have some. Cassell, yeah. yeah. He, he stores a lot of rotary stuff. Yeah, I turned a lot of my stuff over to him. Yeah. Well, he was on the email, so. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. There you go. <clears throat> Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I can go on through some of mine too. So I'll start sending uh, <laughs> random photos. There you go. Okay. Well, Tears, anything further? Anybody else? have anything else? I got a Does question. Does anybody know who took this picture? Who took that picture? Yeah. No. Gunther Kleberg. Oh, did he? Yeah. And, and okay. Florence is in here. But he he couldn't be in the picture, of course, because he was taking the picture. Right. Uh, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Where's Florence? Another one that's passed, Gunther and Florence. Where is Florence yeah. in this pub? Where is she? Yeah. Uh, toward the right. Uh, maybe two rows up. Which one? Which one? This one? Or this one? I see what I see. I can't make this bigger and it's very yeah. small. Isn't she um Florence? I think Florence is down second the row. Second row. That's her there. Third third one in. Oh, right here. Right here? No, mm. beside her with the white sweater on. Right, right there. Here? Okay. That looks like her. Yeah. No. All right. Next to her is Tom's wife. That's Mickey. And right in the middle to Jack's right is uh, Janet Shannon. Yep. Right here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Got hard to see. Oh, Ed that's Shannon. Eddie. He's in there next to Craig War, ex PD, uh, past different. Yep. Uh, that's, that's Eddie in the back there. Hidden. Yep. That's oh, there he is. Yep. Top right. Yeah. I think this is Louie's wife right here, yep. I think. Yeah, Louie's wife, Helen Bongiorno. Yep. I don't know. Does anybody know whether she's still alive? I hadn't heard oh, from anyone saying he, she had passed away. I doubt it. Yeah. Because Louie died quite a while ago. Yeah. Mm. Before Danny, Danny Lucas. Oh. And Tom Cerulli. Oh, where's Tom Cerulli? Oh, that's Tom Cerulli right there. Where? With the glasses? Oh, no. I don't think so. No. Does anybody see? There's a guy with a white jacket or sweater on. This guy? Right from the top. Oh, I haven't been able to identify him. Yeah. We, yeah. Does anybody remember D. Robertis? He wasn't in the club, but he was he was in quite a few of our functions. Oh. He almost became the director at Hayden. Oh. Oh. But Donnie, Donnie wound up with that job. Bob Maloney. Yeah. And he's I hear he's moved back to uh, he's moved off the Cape. He's back either Ruben or Maybe he's next door neighbor to you, Danny. No, he's, he's, uh, Don he's Mahoney? in a condo. Hmm? Don Mahoney? Yeah. Yep. Uh, he's in I a condo in Wuhan. 
Yeah, I thought he lived in Arlington. He's still in Arlington. No, oh, I don't Don, think Don moved out Wuben about uh, six months ago. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah, they sold the house, moved to a condo over off of uh, Lexington Street. Oh. Quail Run. Where? Quail, Quail Run. Run. Oh, oh, Quail yeah. Run. Oh, that's a nice place. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. No, that's on Russell Street. Uh, Russell Street, right. not Lexington. Yeah, You're at Lexington. Yeah. Sorry. Right, yeah. Russell. I always confuse that, too. Yeah. Mm. Lexington, Walton. I was thinking of you. You're at Hall Yeah. Okay. With, with that, Rotarians, our next meeting is uh, Monday the 7th of February. Um, our speaker is going to be our town manager, James Malloy. And we'll have the board meeting prior to, prior to that. Um, at this point, I think we'll, we will adjourn with, without having a bell, but uh, ding. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Bye. Good one, everybody. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. Have a good week. Uh, okay. Yep. Good week. Bye, everybody. Until the next time. Yeah. Bye.